That rock behind me is a favorite spot for people to do some rock climbing. And up at the top, you can take in some spectacular views as well as do a little meditation. But it's not in a place you would expect. It's a bit of a mystery spot. Where am I? I'll reveal that in just a moment. Today, we're gonna to talk about quality when you're looking for your Class B RV. The good, the bad, and the ugly. All that and more in today's episode. I'm at Indian Rock Park in Berkeley, California. And the surprising thing about this park is it's actually located in the middle of a neighborhood. Take a look. It's pretty impressive. As you walk around this neighborhood, you see huge boulders and rocks like the ones behind me just sitting in people's yards. Uh, it's just part of the geological formation in this part of the city. It's really something to be just right in the middle of a major urban area like this and have a park like this. I was told that this was a park that was used for training World War II soldiers. Today we're going to talk about quality in camper vans and this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I experienced firsthand what it was like to have an RV not live up to its quality expectations when I bought my first RV. So by quality I mean not just the fit and finish but also how things are assembled, the quality of the components themselves, and then the level of quality of control that the RV manufacturer performs before they let that camper van roll out of their facilities and into a showroom. Now what you'll find is that each RV manufacturer has different levels for each one of those pieces of quality that I talked about. So for instance, I spent this weekend going to look at the current 2018 camper vans. I like to keep myself informed on what the state of the products are in the industry. And I'll be honest with you, I was appalled at what I saw in the showrooms. So this is the brand new Corrado, the Banff, built by Erwinheimer Road Trek. There's the price, but a nice grab handle. The build quality is not very not very good, but what do you expect for sixty thousand? Okay, so this is a real here build quality issue. As you can see, that's a that's a gap, that's a problem here. And you can see that's a problem there that's a problem so we have some real build quality issues how does the oh this has a door that comes across like that let me see so this door ugh, that's that's the door Anna there's really no how do you well how do you Privacy. What do you do for, oh, you shut that like that? Like, how do you? It is strange, I don't know. Okay, so I just tried to shut the bathroom door and it fell apart on me. So I'm trying to stick it back up here, but anyways, the, the door fell, the door fell apart on me shutting it. There are definitely some quality issues here. So the sink, uh, I tried to shut it and it just ca oh my God. came out. You're just peeking everything. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure, I think maybe, is that how it sh shuts? Oh, that's how it shuts, okay, so. Now quality issues were not even constrained to entry level models like the Corrado. I went to look at the Roadtrek CS Adventurous and the CS Adventurous 
as you know, is the unit that I had before from Road Trek, and one of the reasons why I decided to trade up from the Road Trek to a Pleasure Way is because I had concerns about the quality of my Road Trek. So I wanted to look for the 2018 models if things had improved, and sadly, I have to report things had not improved. All right, so this is one of the top end road treks. So this is the one I had. This is the e track I'm inside, and look at this. This is a look at the gap here. This is really bad build quality. Like, look at that. That's just coming out of the ceiling, and they got another one here that's completely come down. Look, look, it's completely come out of the ceiling like this is the problem with road trek with their their build quality which is why they're not a luxury brand this is unacceptable to me and what's advertised as a hundred and sixty thousand dollar unit that should not be happening with the road trek brand this is in a showroom and it's frankly shocking to me that this is the quality control that we see coming from Road Trek. I don't say this to disparage Road Trek and I don't say this to people to make people who have purchased Road Treks feel bad at all, but my feeling is I think the industry needs to do a better job for the sake of the customers of having higher quality control. It, it's just as simple as that. We are paying a lot of money for these RVs and this is not something where you're thinking, oh, I'm paying $160,000. I deserve to have a Ferrari of RVs. That's not the case. You're not going to get the Ferrari of RVs. But what you should expect when you walk into one of these units on the showroom floor is that the LED lights are not falling out of the ceiling. I don't think that's too much to ask. I really don't. I think RV manufacturers need to spend more time and money making sure that their RVs meet a certain minimal level of quality assurance. That's my opinion. And so the reason why I do these videos and I highlight these things is frankly to shame the RV manufacturers a little bit and to hopefully get them to do the things necessary to bring their quality levels up at least to a minimal level. That's my feeling because I should not walk into a $160,000 motorhome and see quality issues like this. Now in the next row over in the showroom were all of the Winnebago's and the top of the line Winnebago is the Winnebago era. Now it's not, it's MSRP is not 168,000 but it's certainly over $100,000. And I will say this about Winnebago because they are such a large company. They do have very high and very consistent quality control across their company. They do. Where Winnebago will cut corners is in the fit and finish. And they have to do that in order to keep their price point low. Now this goes back to the previous episode that I filmed talking about the different types of buyers. There's the cost focused buyer and there's the performance focused buyer and there's the brand or premium focused buyer. And if you haven't watched that video, I recommend that you watch it now. Just hit the I in the upper right hand corner if you're on a PC and you'll see the, the video listed there. And I recommend you watch that video. But in that video, I talk about, in my estimation, how Winnebago caters to the cost-focused customer. So they're always going to have the lowest priced unit for any class of RV. And I believe that's true if you go look. But what's also consistent about Winnebago is their quality level. So not only are you going to get the lowest cost, you're also going to get a pretty well quality controlled RV. I have never, and I've looked at a lot of RVs and I've looked at a lot of Winnebago's, I have never walked into a Winnebago and found LED lights falling out of the ceiling. I've never walked into them and found large gaps between the doors and the paneling. I've never walked into them and found loose screws or button covers over the side valances and things that have popped off. I've never seen that. And I think that's a testament to Winnebago's quality control efforts. Being a large company and being an, a company that excels in operational excellence, they have set a minimum bar for quality for all of their products and they meet or exceed that. Now where, where Winnebago will cut corners is in some of the fit and finish, but this is to be expected if they're keeping the cost down. 
So as you can see in this video, I'm looking, this is the top of the line era. And I'm looking inside of the wardrobe cabinet back in the lounge. And as you can see, the ceiling in the wardrobe cabinet, it looks finished with this felt type of lining, but it's not even attached at the top at all. I mean, it's not stapled, it's not glued. It's just literally laying there at the top. And that's an example of them, you know, having to cut corners a little bit. So I say this to potential buyers because, and again, if you know that you're a cost-focused buyer, that's not really going to bother you because you're going to look at the rest of the product and you're going to say, you know what, it's a really nice product. The fit and finish is pretty good. The quality is good. I get all the components that I want and the price is excellent. But if you're someone who's perhaps a premium buyer, you, you're going to look at that and say, I'm not okay with that. You can see here I'm looking uh, at the Ottomans in the lounge area, but they're about, I'd say, half the thickness of the cushions in a pleasure way. In the pleasure way, the Ottoman cushions actually use memory foam, so they're very comfortable to sit in. And memory foam is expensive, so that would drive the cost up. But again, if you look at just the fit and finish underneath the cushion, you can see there's gaps between the the top board which covers the ottoman and then the sideboard and that's not a big deal but it's just an example of fit and finish if you go up to something like a, an airstream or pleasure way you're not going to find fit and finish problems like that and that should give you confidence that the rest of the rv is built to that same high quality standards even in areas where you can't see finally up at the front above the cab, this is a cabinet in the Winnebago. And high gloss, beautiful, but you can see I'm struggling here because the cabinet door isn't shut and it's, a, it's misaligned and it's not opening and shutting correctly. Now that's an adjustment issue, but again, it is an example you would never walk into, for instance, a pleasure way or an Airstream and find that problem. The cabinets would be tight and they would work first try and you would not struggle trying to open and close them. So that's just a fit and finish problem. It's not a quality control issue, but again, because these units are manufactured on assembly lines and they push them out in a matter of days instead of weeks, these are the types of uh, sacrifices that have to be made. Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, was once asked, why did he take so much care on the way that Apple designed the insides of the iPhone. And he told an interesting story about how when he was a kid, his dad, who was a carpenter, and he were building a fence in the backyard. And his dad was taking particular care about how a section of the fence, which no one would see, would be put together and look nice. And Steve asked him, why are you doing that? And his dad responded, because good design and taking care and quality of your work doesn't just stop at the facade. It extends all the way through the design, including even places where you'll never see. So when we look at RVs, this is also true. Yes, we have to look at things like the cabinets and the fit and finishes of the hardware and how well things on the surface look and fit together. But you can tell a lot if you look behind the scenes as well. How are things actually constructed in areas where you may never see? So I've actually taken a video to demonstrate this from Winnebago, and I'm not disparaging Winnebago at all, but this is from their 2017 launch of their Paseo. And in their video, they show how parts of the Paseo are created on the, in the factory. And so I wanna point out to you where they use staples in the construction of their cabinetry. Now, a lot of RV manufacturers use staples in the construction of cabinetry, and that's because it's much more economical. But staples just simply do not hold together as well as screws. And when you have to do screws and you have to do uh, L brackets and things to hold joints together, that takes a lot more time than simply having someone with a staple gun staple the cabinetry together. Quality issues are also a challenge for the premium brands. I've pointed out on my channel some of the things I think Pleasureway needs to address on my ascent, including the MCD shades and how they attach to the side of the van. And Mike over at Smedsters 
has an excellent series of videos where he points out some of the quality issues that he has on his 2017 Airstream Interstate Grand Tour EXT. Let's take a look at some of those highlights now. All right, if you guys saw my original walkthrough, you'll also know that the double-sided tape that seems to be behind the side view mirrors um, was installed in such a way that it's sticking above the actual camera. So I think I can take a plastic tool and try to shove it back behind there, but they could have done a better job of uh, using that double-sided tape. Let's walk around to the other side. And I've stowed the uh, rear view or the, the, uh, the mirrors here to be out of the way while I've got it parked. And you can see the same thing here. The tape doesn't extend up as much. Um, but you can still see it. Um, let's see if we can take a look. Now this camera on the other side does stick out a little further than the driver's side here on the passenger side. So it's not pushed all the way up against um, the side of the plastic trim. So they could definitely do a better job of that install. Um, my concern is that it's just a thin, inexpensive film and it's kind of hard to see, but I can get my finger up under there. This is where a button would have been if there were an option on the Sprinter chassis. Um, it's relatively stuck down around here, but if you can see, when I push that, it's not secured all the way down onto the actual dash below it. And you'll see how it moves. And look, you can hear it. So there's space back there where this was not properly secured. Look, and I can pull this. Look at that. So not high quality installation. Um, this is a thin, thin applique for a very expensive van. Very disappointed in the quality of that. The look is fantastic, but the quality of install and product is not. And here's the trim on the door handle side. So you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot to pry that off of the stock door handle. Looks nice, but sure is flimsy. So the bottom line is, quality can vary greatly depending on the manufacturer you're looking at, and the product that you're looking at. But I hope that this video has inspired you to lift up cushions, look inside cabinets, even ask if you can. Ask the dealer if they have a Phillips screwdriver, can they open certain access panels so you can look inside? You can really tell a lot by looking back behind areas that the RV manufacturer thinks no one's gonna look. That's how you're really gonna tell what the true quality level is for the RV that you're looking at. And you should try to gauge for yourself how important and what quality level you're comfortable with. Some of you will say, you know what, I'm fine with a quality level that's lower than Pleasure Way and Airstream because I'm not willing to pay $160,000 or even $120,000 for an RV. That's great. You're going into that purchase decision knowing that. But you could also be a buyer that walks into a really flashy high-end looking RV and thinking, oh, I'm getting a really quality RV, and then you buy it and you drive it off the lot and you find out, oh no, this is not at all what I expected. And that's the type of RV experience I've gone through myself and it's not pleasant. And I'm really hoping that videos like this will help some of you avoid making those types of decisions. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love if you would join our family by subscribing. And finally, if you have any questions or comments or you want to share your experiences, having gone out to look at RVs, I would love to hear them and I'm sure other viewers would love to hear them in the comments section below. The video that I did on answering viewer questions was one of my most successful videos. I'd like to do it one time a month. And at the end of that, I'm thinking about doing a live Q&A session at the end of the episode. Let me know if you think that that's a good idea in the comments section below. 
And if it is, we'll try it out as a as a as an experiment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Take care. Today's mobile studio location is a real find. This large rock outcropping behind me is a favorite for rock climbers and for people who like to meditate and take ah, meditate. I know it looks like I'm in the middle of a sprawling area. <laughs> There's garbage trucks behind me. That gives it away. <laughs> oh, well, let's try this again. So for me, quality is defined as the fit and finish. What does the surface look like? How tightly do things fit together? The quality of the components. In other words, do they use name brand components? The quality control coming from the manufacturer. In other words, what did they let leave off of their assembly lines and into the showrooms? And finally, what is the last thing? Fit and finish, quality control, name brand components, and um, quality components, fit and finish, name brand components, quality control. All right, I guess that's it.